Hey guys, so today I kind of hated my makeup, uh, but now I've kind of like worn it in I think, it's what it's called. I don't know, my skin just looks kind of crusty nowadays, I think it's the weather change. In England it went from like 10 degrees cold, no sunlight, raining, to like, oh we're now in 20 degree weather, you can like tan outside. Uh, not that I tan outside because I literally just burn, so I'm inside, but sometimes I have to step outside and then I feel like that just makes my skin crusty crusty dusty musty but but i think i've like worn in this makeup a little bit so it kind of like works now but i also use like five different eyeshadow palettes to just put on pink eyeshadow like that's the level we're at today also i'm like mid debating and I'm just dyeing my hair pink and just making it into a second channel video talking about second channel it'll be in the description down below i've got two videos in there one is a get ready with me where I do my everyday style makeup and then the second one is me testing a full face of Pat McGrath and Instagram and everything will also be in the description down below but I want to dye my hair pink because I think it'll be kind of a vibe but not like hot pink, like pastel pink because my roots are growing out and I can't do anything about them because everything's closed down so I just thought I'd dye my hair pink and then just have like a nice root pastel pink situation going on but I need my mom's help for that because So today we're going to talk about a few different things. So Shannon Lester. In yesterday's video I spoke about Shannon Lester and then I hop on on twitter.com and my DMs are full, filled, filled to the brim with people sending me this one thread and I was like, uh, okay. I thought I mentioned everything I had to mention in my video yesterday, but I didn't because so she has done so much more than I thought she did. So let's start with it. There are clips I'm going to put in this video. Don't you dare copyright claim me in any way, shape or form. Or I will destroy your bloodline. Where's that from? The first clip I'm going to show you is her making accusations that she has no proof for. Whenever Shannon Lester says something that she wants us to believe that she has no proof for, she says that this is coming from a reputable source. Who is your reputable source? Because I don't see them. I don't know who they are, so I'm not going to trust them. There's a video of her basically talking about how Angelina Jolie allegedly has a lot of abortions and for every abortion she has, she needs a baby, which is why she has so many children. She definitely wants kids. Do you know why Angelina needs to have so many kids? This is wild. I'm gonna blow your mind right now. I've heard from a very, very wealthy source that the reason she needs, needs to have all of these kids is because she needs a child for every abortion that she had. And she had like seven abortions. And so she feels like she owes life, God, whoever, like a baby to balance out her sins. It's not a sin. It's not a sin. It's your body. And that apparently she's had seven abortions, which means she has seven kids because she feels like she has to make up for it. You're telling me that first of all, she is not ready for a child, so she's having an abortion and then is going and adopting a child for every abortion that she has, that makes no sense. But if she, for some reason, I know some people don't want to have their own children, they want to take children out of the foster care system, out of child homes and basically give them a new life. So I kind of understand if someone doesn't want to have children, they will like biologically have children, but they want to adopt children because they want to help more kids out. And I think that's what Angelina Jolie is doing. She has gone and adopted kids that otherwise probably wouldn't be adopted. I don't think Angelina Jolie is having to make up for abortions. I think Angelina Jolie is just a helpful person and she has empathy for kids that have been neglected. Then she makes a whole clip about how basically Beyonce is an idiot. Somebody had a chest set and they put it in a Prada bag and they were like giving it to, to somebody else, like a Prada shopping bag, like a paper shopping bag. And they're like, oh, thanks. And Beyonce's like, wait a minute, Prada makes a chest set? Why don't I have one? I'm like, oh no, no, I just, I just put it in the bag. I just need to give them something. She's like, Prada makes a chest set and I don't have one. Why don't I have a Prada chest set? And they're like, no, it's, it's not a Prada chest set. It's a chest set. I just am using this bag to transport it. And she could not get it. She couldn't understand that. She couldn't understand. She basically in more words than that, called Beyonce an idiot. And I was like, first of all, where are you getting this story from? Second of all, what? That's just mental. Another clip, it was kind of dark. So at first I was kind of like, mm, is this actually her? But the voice was very similar. So there's that. Here at the end, she says her name. She says Shallon. And I don't actually know many people that sound like her and also called Shallon. So this is pretty like, but she basically is like, oh, I researched my age of consent. He basically said he was 18 and she's like, I dated younger than you. And I've said this in my last video, I said this yesterday, that she has a weird obsession with young men. She has a weird obsession with having control over people and age for her is a point of control. She loves to be in charge and she will basically treat them as if they're children. And that is 
mental to me. She also has admitted that she's been diagnosed as having narcissistic traits, which just does not surprise me at all. It one bit whatsoever. Then she claims she has anxiety that she's being medicated for, and then she bashes every single person that has anxiety. What did Zayn Malik always say about why he was canceling shows? Anxiety. It's interesting that as this whole like anxiety wave hits this generation, you know, suddenly everyone's got anxiety. Suddenly it's an excuse for everything. And look, I have anxiety too. I'm on medication. Makes no sense. So she always has a problem with people if they don't want to perform or they, they want to kind of like pass on an event or something because of anxiety. She has a problem with that. And she makes YouTube videos. And she claims that because she does her job while having anxiety, they can do their job while having anxiety. But the thing is, you're sitting alone in a room in front of a camera for 30 minutes not doing much work afterwards, you're not really editing, I already spoke about that yesterday, that video will be in the description. Those people are performing in front of hundreds of thousands of people at once. Those people have the right to not want to do that when they're mid panic attack. Just a thought. And the thing is they can't just put it off, they can't be like, oh I'll come back in half an hour. You can, you can say right now I'm having a panic attack and I don't really want to film a video right now so I'll film it in half an hour because I do have to still get it done today but I can do it in half an hour. When those People say go on the stage right now, you're going on the stage right now, whatever state you're in. So if someone one day decides that they don't want to do this because their mental health is stopping them from doing that, then so be it. And the thing is, for the longest time, she brought down Kylie Jenner while bringing up Rihanna. So she was like, she's got this analogy that she makes in every single video I've watched on this, where she's like, Kylie Jenner is a cold blooded animal. She needs like other people's attention to make herself feel better. And then she compares that to Rihanna and says that Rihanna is a warm blooded animal because she gets her confidence from within herself, which fair enough, that might be the case, but you don't know that. You don't know how Rihanna functions and you also don't know how Kylie Jenner functions. Kylie Jenner can be fully content with herself, but just wants to post half naked pictures because that's her prerogative and Rihanna could be the most insecure woman ever on planet earth but you don't know that because you're not there and that's why I said yesterday if you're not in these celebrities lives you don't know anything you don't know and then after going off on how Rihanna's this like confident woman uh, she then makes this video about how Rihanna didn't perform at an event because she had anxiety and she basically mocked her for having anxiety and then she mocked Zayn Malik for doing that same thing while also saying that she has anxiety herself which is just so narcissistic. This is what I mean by the narcissistic traits. It's like she's allowed to have this thing. But if anyone else claims to have this thing that she has, they're faking it. But she's not, allegedly. I mentioned this yesterday. Pete Davidson, she says, apart from the thing I mentioned yesterday, which is that he said he was idol for a while but then he didn't do it because he has family and friends that he cares about and he wouldn't never and he would never want to hurt them. And he also mentioned self-harm. And then she basically said, Oh, the interviewer didn't ask like did he ever ask that's so uncomfortable why would he mention it when the interviewer did in fact ask she just took that clip out of context even if the interviewer didn't ask it's an interview about his life so he's going to talk about it because it's a part of his life and she called him manipulative for basically saying that he wouldn't commit suicide because of his friends and family when in fact most people that ask are going to say the same thing it's that they wouldn't want to hurt their friends and family by doing that. And now another clip has been found where she says, he goes to rehab when he feels like he's going a little bit too far, you know, so that he can clean out and then get adjusted, like have his meds adjusted. So he's going to rehab in service of getting more drugs. That's what that means. I go to rehab so I can con my doctors into giving me more drugs. Were you there? Do you have any proof? I hope deep within my heart that she gets sued by every single celebrity she's ever mentioned on her channel. I hope, I, I hope Selena Gomez, Pete Davidson, Angelina Jolie, Meghan Markle. I hope they sue her. I really hope they do. I am waiting for season desist to be getting sent out because this is so out of f***ing hand. This is disgusting to be saying this shit about people that you have no clue what they're going through, if this is even true or not. You're just claiming they have these reputable and trustworthy sources. Like we don't know who these people are. We don't know where you're getting these sources from. Sources. I could say anything. Oh, my source tells me that Shannon Lester killed someone. It's a reputable source, guys. I can trust them, so you can trust them too. That's not how it works, Shannon. She then claimed she had a makeup session with Harry Styles. Then she also um, unboxes posters from Monster X and BTS, who are K-pop bands. And she calls them feminine. She says that they all look the same. How do you distinguish them? 14, you can't fool me. This is also BTS. You might say that it's Monster X, but they've got the same haircut, they've got the same weird contacts. There, there's no way that these are different people. Those sentences and phrases have very racial undertones because for the longest time, people claimed that Korean, Chinese, and Japanese people look the 
the same, that they can't distinguish between two Asian people because they all look the same. This has been an ongoing stereotype and an ongoing joke that's been made about Asian people. So the fact that she's now perpetuating that, but also claiming to be this woke person who's like not racist at all, so yeah, those are the clips that are very problematic. She's now losing subscribers. And she's also not taking any accountability. So this is one of the comments under her Instagram. She's actually privated her Twitter now, so you can't find any tweets. And allegedly she's deleting videos off of her channel that are the most problematic. There is a whole like bunch, like a solid 10 videos, 10 to 15 videos on Meghan Markle alone, calling her manipulative saying that she took Harry away from his family, which no, Harry left his family for his wife and kid that's what happens when your family is mean to your wife and you have a kid with this wife you're gonna have to pick one or the other and i sure as hell hope it's the wife so she called her manipulative she said that she just wanted to be famous that she's just went there for money megan markle had a good career before this she had a whole show set and if she had not married harry she would have rode this show out for like eight seasons i think I think Suits has seven or eight seasons. I watched it a few times. My mom's watched it a few times. It's a great show. And I hate people that criticize Meghan Markle and then undermine her success by saying, oh, what's this Suits TV show? I've never heard of it. Like, we know how content you are with your success in life if you have to undermine other people's success. So she said that basically Meghan Markle's a gold digger, that she just wanted to be a princess and couldn't handle it. Why is it that Kate Middleton gets a completely different treatment? Is it possibly something to do with their skin tones? So why is Shannon Lester pushing this narrative that Megan was just supposed to handle all of this hate that was being thrown her way? I don't think that's something that she signed up for. I don't think she signed up to be completely disrespected by everyone and everything in the United Kingdom. She had every right to say, I'm done with this. I also mentioned yesterday about Demi Lovato's Finster and how hateful she is towards Selena Gomez and then pretends to be this like supportive woman that's like pro woman when she's literally hateful towards Selena Gomez on this Finster that is allegedly hers, allegedly. She went on live from that Finster, so I don't know how that's not proof enough, but. But then today I saw a video of Demi Lovato's meet and greet that people allegedly paid $400 for. And I want you to see her enthusiasm when she's meeting her fans and taking pictures with them. This is insane to me. Like whenever I see things like this, I'm like, how do you expect to be successful? How do you expect to be successful when you treat your fans that way? And I have the same criticism of Jeffree Star. It's like, how? How do people like that get to the top? Why do we let people like that get to the top? People that have no respect for the people that got them where they are. Like Demi Lovato wouldn't be in this situation if her fans didn't buy her music, didn't go to her concerts, didn't support her, didn't follow her, like her tweets, like her Instagram pictures. Like she wouldn't be where she is right now. And she still complains and then she treats them like this. So recently Ellen DeGeneres has been getting called out for being a bad person. She first got called out by Nikki Soros and that kind of started the wave of people coming out and saying, yeah, I've been treated pretty poorly by Ellen DeGeneres. First of all, Nikki said that Ellen didn't like acknowledge her before she went on stage and that she wasn't even allowed to use the toilet because that toilet was reserved for the Jonas Brothers. And then she threw some shade and said that the Jonas Brothers interview only got 2 million views and hers got 8 which just goes to show the power of YouTube I love that so people have been coming out and basically saying that Ellen's not a nice person everyone had like pretty bad experiences with Ellen that I've spoken about before I read this on Pop Crave so Ellen crew members are outraged as they were kept in the dark after Voldemort shut down production with many on show if they should file for unemployment at Variety Reports crew was later told to expect a 60% pay cut despite the show continuing to run at Ellen's house when Ellen DeGeneres makes 50 million a year and most of these people are probably on minimum wage. Then there was a little bit of a conspiracy theory with Gabby Hanna. Gabby Hanna's stan account tweeted out saying, to me, Dandelion, Dandelion is her new book that she's coming out with, is about a friendship that was once amazing and love filled but turned toxic when one of the friends turn on the other. Then the other friend proves Miss Toxic wrong by developing and growing to be much stronger. Multiplies, if you will, at Gabby Hanna. Gabby Hanna liked that tweet. If you don't know, Jessie Smiles has a dandelion tattoo on her back. So if this is, this book is a representation technically of a toxic friendship gone wrong. And if one of those friends with whom a friendship has gone wrong publicly has a dandelion tattoo... Could this possibly be shade towards Jessie Smiles? And if it is, what? 
with Gabby Hanna, there was some more tea as well. So on her Instagram story, she did a Q&A and someone said, what piece of criticism of your art annoys you the most? And she says, I don't mind healthy, constructive criticism at all, but I don't like when people take things off context to present it as something it's not. Adulterlescence was always a comedy slash parody poetry book and I've never pretended it wasn't. So having jokes taken as me writing serious poetry when I'm literally writing puns is frustrating. But the thing is, she never made it sound like a joke. I remember I still watched Gabby Hanna's videos when Adulterlescence came out because she wasn't problematic to me at the time and she presented it as like a poetry book she didn't say oh this is a parody poetry book she didn't say this is a comedy poetry book she just said i'm releasing a poetry book full of poetry about my life so i don't and people are allowed to make fun of things and criticize them even if they're supposed to be a joke because your jokes were bad in the poetry so even if it was supposed to be comedy it still was kind of bad and people are allowed to make fun of it the next piece of tea is there was this lash brand who basically threatened someone <laughs> over pr so uh, a girl called ren zate ren zate ren zate some lash brands are bold is what she tweeted out and she received a dm saying hey renee hope you and fam are well have you had time to film new look with lashes and she said hi as i previously stated i did not realize that sending the lashes to me was an agreement to do a look with them as you would understand a product is not payment i have tons of other lashes sent from brands that do not expect anything in return nor have they ever asked me to do a video for free if you would like me to do a video with the lashes i'm happy to send you my rates love ren which is true uh, if you look at these big beauty gurus, PR isn't a sponsored video. They still have to disclose that what they received, they received in PR, just so you know where you stand. But PR is not some kind of an agreement that they're going to film videos with them. Most YouTubers don't show probably 90% of the PR they receive because, you know, they have to sort through it and then they only film videos with the things that they like. And that's the risk of PR. When you're sending PR to an influencer, there is a high chance they might not use it in a video, but there is also a chance that they will show it in a video for free and then you have free promo. That's the risk of sending PR. But PR is not automatically an agreement for a video. And if you want a specific sponsored post, you have to pay for it. Because she's not gonna pay her rent and bills with some lashes. And then she quote retweeted that tweet and said, this lash brand is saying that they are going to send someone to collect the lashes that I did not like. The used lashes I didn't like. They are saying that they are sending someone to my doorstep to collect lashes. Be careful with what brands you share your address with. And that's so true. I don't have a PO box because I don't receive PR. So if anyone was to send me something I'd have to give them my home address and then if someone basically just said they're going to come and collect false lashes from my house I'd call the police because that is creepy but also isn't there a lockdown happening so she posts dms with the lash brand and she puts the lash brand on blast by putting their name in the screenshot it's designer lashes uk so she says hey renee hope you're good we are a peter approved false eyelash brand based in the uk we have recently relaunched the brand into fur free lashes and would love to have you involved by sending some to try let us know and we'll have organized can't wait to hear back from you uh diane designer lashes and then she fast forwards to when they're like oh we'll come we'll we'll need those lashes back then if you're not going to film a video with them and she's like yeah sure once this quarantine is over i'll be happy to send them back but i'm not risking my health nor my son's health because you want your lashes back hope you understand and they say you can easily leave parcel outside we will arrange to be picked up and she said i'm not in my apartment i have been with my parents for a month and we'll be here until the lockdown is over and then designer lashes uk says i've saved chat again will arrange to be collected next month. In future, it would be best to tell brands that their products are not for you before requesting payment to promote to your followers. Personally, you would never pay someone who did not believe in our brand. The next piece of tea is that Nicaro Avocado is quitting YouTube, allegedly. So he posted on Instagram saying, yes, I'm leaving, link in my Insta bio. In case you don't know, I am walking away from the toxic platform. You guys are so mean to me and never actually cared about me or rooted for me. You only wanted to see me fall and laugh at me for not being good enough. I'd make the same amount of money working as a garbage pickup man. And honestly, there's a lot less stress doing something like that where you aren't continually judged lied about ridiculed harassed slandered or bullied by millions of people who think they're entitled to your life please hear my final words and goodbye i feel free and happy without your malicious hate and nasty spiteful mouth and i want to add on to this nikolai avocado has done some tough shit. i'm not gonna try and even go around that but recently there was a situation that i kind of didn't talk about and now it was kind of too late to talk about but now this links to this which i want to get into Ricardo avocado has an only fans where he posts explicit pictures and recently a commentary channel called james marriott filmed a reaction with his friends which was him reacting to nick Ricardo avocado's nick's only fans pictures and it was supposed to be funny and kind of like humorous nick posted a troll like reaction basically making like advances and flirting with James Marriott and then James Marriott made a response video to that video also making a lot of jokes and basically going along like the with the flirtatious jokes and the sex 
all jokes because it was funny because it's it's what's funny and James Murray's commentary videos aren't like normal commentary videos they're mainly just a lot of like punchlines and jokes there's not a lot of like seriousness like you're not gonna go there and just get like facts and research you're gonna get jokes and just like making light of different situations that was that people were just like cool great that's amazing and then spill i've spoken about spill before they're a company there's like 16 employees in that company they've made content on facebook before along the lines of like troom troom that kind of content and now they make drama and tea videos because it's what's doing well right now but they're a company there there are journalists there that do the research and they took jokes out of context and made it seem and basically flat out said that james marriott was uncomfortable where at no point did he say he was uncomfortable he actually went along with the jokes and then he on his instagram story afterwards said i'm not happy that spill took my content out of context they basically took two sentences cut them down into one sentence and then said that this is proof for James Murray being uncomfortable when if you just played the clip along, he went along with the sexual joke. So he was pretty unhappy. He posted an Instagram story where he was like, I'd like it if Spill didn't take my jokes out of context and make it seem like I'm uncomfortable. And also, who are you to say that I was uncomfortable? Like Spill at no point DM'd James Murray and was like, hey, were you uncomfortable in this clip? And at no point did James Murray go, oh yeah, I was super uncomfortable. Would you like to report on it? They just assumed that th th that he was uncomfortable and then that's what they reported which is fake news and they've actually taken that video down now for a company with <laughs> over 10 employees i'm assuming i think that's what's come out it's kind of strange that you would take a clip cut it down to fit your narrative and then report on that as if it's real news as if it's real content and the thing is they've always claimed that their tea is always cold because they like to get all the research done there seems to be a lack of research for all the cold tea you're producing. They're also doing that format now that drama channels are doing where they're doing mini teas, which is really strange because once again, they always prided themselves on doing research on tea and then linking it to like real life experiences. And now they're basically doing what Drama Alert, Tea Spill, Me, Spill Sesh and many other people have been doing for a while. I'm just not comfortable with this company full of grown adults uh, thinking that they can somehow jump into the tea industry and then just understand in, it, like internet jokes when they clearly don't because people that are like one generation above us don't really understand how internet humor works the people running spill seem to be in that generation above us so they just don't understand internet humor and this really jumped out when they covered that james mario nikocado avocado situation it was just so uncomfortable to watch i was like what is happening but i don't have the video anymore because i didn't download it when it was up because i didn't think they'd delete it but they did so if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, comment down below, anything, comment down below, and subscribe to those videos every time something happens. Might be every day, might be every other day. Please subscribe and hit that bell and be notified when that's happening. Social media links in the description, second channel description, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye, guys.